Hi, my name is Sandro Esposito with SignalFire. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to connect a Pressure Scout to a SignalFire Gateway Stick gateway. This procedure requires to also power the breakout board and having at your disposal the USB serial cable that will be necessary to connect the toolkit with the gateway through the breakout board. Also, you'll need the USB serial cable. Now this one you're going to be connecting to the Pressure Scout. And again, the SignalFire Toolkit software will then be required to configure the Pressure Scout to communicate with the gateway. Let's talk about the breakout board for a second. So the breakout board is where you're going to be landing the six conductors that are coming from the gateway stick over here. Then you have power that you will apply here, six to 36 volts DC that you can apply on those two terminals. You need to connect the USB serial cable, which is connected to the computer using the USB connector. Let's talk about now about the gateway stick for a second. Uh, the gateway stick can be identified here with the letter stamped, GW, also the, the nameplate, which is there. Uh, but notice the light, how it's blinking right now. It's blinking slowly. This means that there's no signal fire node yet connected to it. So there's nothing attached wirelessly to uh, this gateway at this point. When we will have the pressure scout connected, at least one node, you'll notice that the pattern will start blinking very fast. Now that's an indication that we have at least one node connected to the gateway stick. Now the pressure scout. Oh, we'll remove the cover. So the pressure scout is offered in ranges from like 2 PSI to 20,000 PSI. You can identify the pressure range by the letters stamped over here on the X part of the sensor right down below. This one is a 5,000 PSI. Here's the battery connector. And right there you have where you're gonna insert the battery connector into. And you also have a check-in button that forces the device to check into the gateway as well as a zero button. This one you're gonna be using to zero your pressure. You're gonna release the pressure to atmosphere or whatever process you have when you have zero pressure. You can click and hold until the light blinks back. At this point, you have zeroed the pressure sensor. So let's configure it. First part, we're gonna plug in the battery. And then you'll notice that the patterns of the light will start blinking fast. This is an indication that the pressure scout is searching for a gateway. One last important thing before we move on to the software is proximity, okay? Proximity between the antenna and the gateway. If they're too close, you will have problems connecting. The signal is too loud, essentially. So move further away, say, um, you know, a feed or two, just move it away. And that way you're gonna have a successful connection if you're doing this on a tabletop, on a bench. It's necessary to not have them too close, okay? So then the four pin connector, you're gonna insert the four pin connector as such. And we're ready to now configure the pressure scout. Let's move on to the software and show you how you link the gateway to the pressure scout. So launch the software toolkit called the signal fire toolkit. From the drop down menu, select the COM port for your gateway. If you don't know what COM port it is, you can go to the device manager windows or simply disconnect the cable to the gateway and refresh the window. In this case, it's COM22 and I'm gonna click auto detect. The following window is the configuration window of the gateway. You'll notice on the left hand side, the firmware, the voltage, and if there's any device connected to it down below. So part one is to identify this gateway with a unique number. So I'm gonna choose like a radio network of one and a network group of zero. So this essentially makes this gateway unique if should you have multiple gateways 
in your given environment. You're going to put in an encryption key. A 128-bit encryption key will ensure uh, a secure connection between the nodes and the gateway. Apply the settings. And now the gateway is ready to receive nodes configured with the network 1, 0, and the encryption key. Part 2. So let's now interface with the pressure scout. Select the COM port for your USB 4-pin cable and hit Auto Detect. If there is a new firmware available for the Pressure Scout, you'll see on the top right corner Firmware Update Available. You can simply click on that button and hit Start Upgrade should you want to upgrade the Pressure Scout to the newer firmware. Down below, you'll see a list of all the new features based on the firmware. For this demonstration, I will leave the existing firmware as is. Now let's match the network and radio network group to the settings of the gateway that we've set previously. Hit apply all settings. And then wait for the pressure scout to connect to the gateway. It'll take about a few seconds to maybe 30 seconds to connect to the gateway. You can hit the refresh button and as soon as it's, as it's connected, on the top right corner, you'll see connected and the signal strength. A signal strength of a minus 80 or less is excellent. Then close the window, refresh the gateway screen, and now you have the Pressure Scout fully connected, interfacing wirelessly with the gateway. You can see the check-in interval and as well as the signal strength. If you want to do what we call over the air configuration, that means like being able to remotely make changes to the device without being physically connected, hit configure. And now you are wirelessly making changes to the pressure scout without being physically connected to it. Pretty powerful. You can change the node ID, the node name, how often it's checking in. Uh, you can also change the, the scaling of the device. So any changes that you make are sent wirelessly to the node without being physically attached to it. Here I'm changing the check-in interval, which also affects the battery life. So you can see the battery life on the bottom left hand corner, the scaling, if you want to convert pressure to level, you can also set alarm thresholds where the pressure scout will sample faster if that threshold has been met. So say the pressure is less than 10 PSI or more than a, a thousand, we'll move into a fast sample interval mode. Very useful if you have some uh, situation that are intermittent and you want to capture more data points. Apply those settings. And now you've done some configuration without being attached to the pressure scout. Finally, you can end the session uh, by clicking the end button. If you forget to do this, don't worry. After 10 minutes, the session will time out on, on its own and return to its normal state. Here, once you double click on the node, you can validate all the Modbus registers and their respective value. Quite useful for your system integration folks that need to know the registers of the pressure scout. And that's how you configure a pressure scout wirelessly. And as you can see, it was pretty simple connecting the pressure scout wirelessly to the gateway stick. We did a couple things to make that happen. First, we connected to the breakout board using a USB serial cable. We set the network group, network group ID, and the encryption key in the gateway to make this gateway unique. Because you may have like multiple gateways like this in one environment. So you need to have each one of them to be different from a network standpoint. Then we connected to the pressure scout using the USB serial cable. We configured the network group and ID as well as the encryption key to match the one from the gateway. We also set a device ID to be unique for this node because you can have up to 240 nodes onto one network. So make sure that you identify each of them with a unique slave ID number. 
And then finally, once you apply the power, the device will automatically search for the gateway. When it discovers the gateway and the node is attached, you'll notice that the blinking light on the gateway stick will now blink slowly. Thank you very much for watching this video and look for other videos where we teach you how to connect other nodes to our gateway stick.